Awesome. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, welcome to a live video with me and Maria. How are you doing, Maria? Hey, I'm doing great, Jared. It's uh, rainy here in Canada, Ontario, but uh, hey, it's better than snow because where you live, it's snowing a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got uh, probably our last month of good weather. I'm just looking out the window there. Probably yeah. last month of good weather there until uh, we're back to the usual Alberta weather. Uh, so I can't wait for that. Yeah. Uh, but so today, guys, we're just going to chat about um, product niche development. So this is the yeah. most important thing to getting involved in the online world. Um, yeah. So for those of you guys who don't know Maria, uh, we actually started working together just a few years ago. It was more of a give take relationship. I was uh, taking. <laughs> she was providing a lot of general or uh, generous insight to me. So that was awesome. But um, quick little 30 second recap on, on what I think about Maria. Uh, and then she can share something is Maria is absolutely incredible. She's taught over 25,000 entrepreneurs since 2008, I believe is the, is the number yeah. there. <laughs> Aging <Yeah>. me here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and she does an absolutely awesome job. Uh, and our relationships kind of progressed into a give, give relationship, which is awesome because uh, I kind of felt bad for all those, those, those generous, generous teaching points she gave us. So Maria, I'll let you introduce yourself really quickly as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm Canadian and uh, basically went the entrepreneurial route, gosh, back in the year 2000, where when Internet was just starting to come out and I kind of started a software hosting company, um, got, you know, 1.5 million financing from Silicon Valley, started a big hosting server farm, hosting people's websites. Back in the day, Jarrett, they charged a million dollars. I'm not kidding. One million dollars to do a website. Um, one of my friends worked for a digital marketing agency in Los Angeles, and that's what got me into this whole online trend. And then since then, I've started many multiple millions of dollars of companies and helped others. Um, you know, I've done a lot of uh, launches back in the day too. broke the first launch in a huge marketing forum, did one hundred thousand dollars in less than twenty five hours. That was kind of like breaking the four minute mile. Once I did that, then everyone else kind of followed on that in that um, marketing uh, forum. And, you know, I love and I'm passionate about helping others, teaching others, and then also running my own companies as well. So um, co-founder of Target Insider with Care Sharon, and uh, we just love uh, doing this stuff, you know, and seeing how you just just took off. And now, um, you know, that's why we're doing stuff together, because it's, it's just great. <laughs> yeah. So it's been an awesome relationship with uh, with you, Maria. It's been incredible for those of you guys uh, mm -hmm. who are just tuning in. But we are responsible for millions of dollars in sales together. So we, we come from a different avenue of, of coaching. Together, we're over $10 million in online sales. So it's absolutely awesome. So yeah. what we're chatting about today is product niche development. This is why you guys are probably all here. How to you know enter. What, what niche should you guys enter? How should you do it? If it's already a saturated niche, how should you compete? Those types of things. We're going to go over this. So me and Maria have been working together, uh, yeah. and we've been actually chatting about basically what are the top niches because, you know, we see thousands and thousands of e-commerce stores. We've seen millions of dollars of sales. And what's kind of the trends now, and how should you enter? So Maria will touch on it a yeah. little bit, but we, we've basically been yeah. working on this list together. And Maria, I'd like you just to chat about – um, this list that we've come up with. Yes, made a list that can get you to easily 5K per month. And first of all, can everyone, I see that there's quite a few of you right now participating, and I love that. Say yes if you are doing e-commerce sales or you have some kind of physical product store right now. Just type in yes in the comments. I'd love to see that. And if you're not, type in no, uh, because it just gives us a, a, a general drift of you know who you're at, where you're at. And um, this this list we've created is 21 hot product ideas, niches for e-commerce. It's a little bit of a tease for you because if you comment below a certain thing, we're going to tell you, I'll let Jared reveal what they need to comment, what you need to comment below. We're going to give you actually a copy of this. It's really hot. 21 hot product niches, ideas for you to go into for e-commerce 2017 and 2018. And Jared, anyone who selects any of these niches, niches, however you pronounce it, get rich in your niche, can easily make up to five thousand dollars per month, and you know, way more as well. Um, we've got also ten product niche ideas, a resource for that that even gives you a starter kit for each product, which is huge. Even the actual photography and images and pictures you can use. I'm just astounded by this resource. So it's absolutely free as well for you to get. And Jared, I'll leave it to you whether you want to spill the beans, how every, anyone can get their hands on it. If you want to save that for later. 
yeah, of course. We'll save that a bit for later. And the list right. was actually pretty fun to develop. We uh, we agreed on most of them, and then mm -hmm. there was a couple where we had to choose. We we wanted to isolate ours to that top yeah. ten for you guys, you know, because a lot of you guys are deciding to get into e-commerce. Uh, and, and we made some pretty interesting arguments with each other over that. It was awesome. But we've got this incredible, incredible list uh, that we're going to get to. So um, in regards yeah. to this, this list, I just wanted to chat. There's some on this list that are already proven successful niches. And there's hey, some Jared. That aren't. Yeah. I know you're in a flow, but I just got to say, look at everyone participating and saying yes. And there's a few no's, but just a big shout out to everyone. And cause I'm saying that because, Jared, I know you can't see it. So just a big shout out to like Pete, Sam, Dan, Darla, Thumper, Sally, uh, Pat, Blanks, Orlando, Marvo, Linda, uh, Lewis. Did I pronounce it right, Lewis? Uh, just phenomenal. So uh, anyways, go ahead. I, I know. I, I, I totally interrupted your bone So everyone get used to the me and Maria and Jarrett show. So go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, and thank you guys for engaging because me and Maria are doing this quite a bit now. Uh, we're going to be trying to do these lives all the time. So it's awesome to know where you guys are at in your guys' e-commerce lifetime so that we can provide you guys with quality content there. So um, we're going to start to dive into this list and just chat about a couple of the things on this list. So um, the biggest one that we thought is the number one trending you know, niche to get into or, or not get into, I guess, if you're not interested in it, but uh, in making money, sorry, but um, was the self-care products and cosmetics. This niche is massive. This is everything from the essential oil side of things to skincare products, you know, anything to do with your personal image in that sense. Uh, it's absolutely amazing how big this niche has become. And me and Maria kind of have some rules as we go through all these niches really, really quickly um, about how you should decide which one you want to compete in. And I think, Maria, you've got some excellent points on this. If, when deciding what niche you should join, because there's a list of great ones, how do you kind of narrow these down? Yeah, uh, let me kind of um, bring myself back in here uh, if I can. <laughs> it's kinda, uh, this B Live thing sometimes gets me going, so I have to be the driver here. Um, you know, with this phenomenal list that you know we have, one of the things is that I like to do, or especially I discover when I'm helping others determine what they want to sell, or maybe they have a, one or more e-commerce stores and they haven't been successful yet is then let's just go back to the brass tacks of what you like, right? Like what, what would you wear or what would you use? And, you know, obviously, you know, we're not talking about buying like a, um, I don't know, a, a pink colored, you know, frog or something, because maybe not too many people would buy that, but something that's a little more popular, but whether it's your hobby or whatever, because that way, if it's something that you yourself would use or wear and feel comfortable with, it's going to be easier for you to sell it, right? Because you can kind of get more into the mind of your ideal customer and it will be easier for you to write about the product. It'll be easier for you to identify what other things might that person buy? Because for instance, um, like Jared, you know, one of your first stores that did $2.1 million in 18 months, you know, was in the fitness arena, but that those particular people that bought that product, there are so many cross-selling opportunities and, and even affiliate marketing stuff to sell to that person. And, and what's good about it is that you sort of already intuitively know. So that's my, um, my tip to you. And I know, Jared, you have other great tips. And please, everyone, ask questions below, right? Uh, I really want you to ask questions so we can interact with you. And Jared, I know you can't see the questions, so I'll, I'll um, show them on the screen. But uh, so, yeah, so, the, so my email teaser to some of you was the blank thing to successful product strategy. The blank thing, the blank is, is basically something you would wear or use yourself. You don't necessarily have to be passionate about it. I'm not talking about if you don't like gardening, oh shoot, I better not do a, a gardening uh, you know, physical product store. But maybe there, there's a little bit of a thing that you like about gardening. Maybe you love growing uh, fresh vegetables, like selling tomato seeds. You could actually source, did you know that Jared? You can source seeds to plant. <laughs> And ship it from China, like these, you know, heirloom tomatoes, you know, really special kind, and sell it, and make money. Did you know that, Jared? Is that cool? That's cool. I didn't know <laughs> yeah. that. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, to touch on what Maria is saying, that's exactly the point, right? Because you might have a great product, yeah. um, but you won't know how to upsell that or, or market that appropriately to people. Whereas in the fitness niche, you know, I'm very, very involved in that. I play sports my whole life. I work mm -hmm. out. You know, I try to every day, but you guys are taking too much of my time up. So uh, that's shifting that. But, um, you know, I was selling just a, a basically a device to mix your supplements for you. And then from there, I went, well, I also need to mix my supplements. So I'm going to start selling supplements or I need these certain workout products as well that are great supplementary products to mine. 
And that's where the big money is. The big money isn't just in one product necessarily, right? It's allowing those upsells, those cross sells. How can I take a customer and keep them as a lifetime customer? What should I offer them? If you're involved with that niche, that is how you compete, right? That is how you know these answers to these questions because it's very, very difficult for me to go in and, you know, sell women's dresses, for example. I might think something looks good. I might think that this is awesome, but my taste is horrible. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what something looks like on a hanger. I don't know how to say, Hey, if you like this one, you'll probably like this one too. So that makes it incredibly difficult. Now, one other thing that, that really, really helps is picking something or a product that if you saw yourself on Facebook, especially if you saw a video of it, you would tag a friend in this. So whenever I'm going through my Facebook feed and I see a video, I'll always go, wow, I watched that. I really like that. I want to tag one of my buddies in that. Now that's free advertising for them, right? So if you can start to think of these products that people would really want to engage with, you know, a lot of these times these are new products to the market or, you know, like fidget spinners at the beginning, that was like a huge fad and everyone was tagging everyone they knew in these videos. That's free marketing, right? For the person who owns that product. So when you see products like that, that you can make a video like that, that's amazing. That's a 10 out of 10 winner. You don't necessarily need that, but that's going to make your life a whole lot easier, right? What do you think of that, Maria? Yeah, yeah, no, that that's huge. Uh, you know, if you're wondering what, what type of product that, that is the thing that's, that's going to. to I just hear an echo. I'm not sure. Do you hear an echo? No, I don't hear what I'm. Oh, okay, cool. Maybe it's just on my side. Um, so, it, it, I want for you watching right now. I don't care what part of the world you're in. Just um, type in one if you do have a problem with finding products to sell because we really want to know because going back to what Jarrett said if you're in your facebook stream and you use facebook and you're seeing all these you know products that maybe you like and then you would like Jarrett said take or share a friend then that's a sign you know what, what's that saying there's your sign <laughs> so uh sally says one she yeah she's having i guess that means one was like they were having problems picking yeah. and finding hot products okay uh, Aviv says one, Sam says one. So there's a lot. Um, I have a bit of an echo going on, Kara does say. So maybe I'll stop talking for a bit, Jared, and Jared, and let you kind of talk about, uh, you know, some other tips on how to find hot products. Or uh, I like the benefits of, of when you select one niche. You talk a lot about niche development, going deep in your niche, Jarrett. So what do you talk about how the benefits of that, you know, how it can reduce your advertising as well and all that kind of fun stuff? Yeah, certainly. Okay. So um, what, Marie is, what Marie is chatting about with this is, is niche development. This is a huge, huge advantage to focusing on one thing, you know. So starting in the fitness industry, for example, I'll always relate it back to that. That's just the most relatable for you guys, I find. Starting in the fitness industry selling this product, I developed that niche for myself. So then I had a customer base who I could sell similar products to, people who had similar lifestyles. And you can just expand and expand and expand. So you only need that one winner at the beginning to create yourself 10 winners, right? And that's, that's the power of developing a niche where you can actually really successfully compete in. And that all goes back to what Maria was saying is if it's a product that you would use yourself. That's a huge advantage for um, bringing up the demand in order to sell uh, to a multiple or a, a, sorry, a huge, huge consumer group like that. It, it allows you to just ramp out sales and scale internationally, scale globally and become something that you really never thought you could. So going back to this, this topic that we all care about is where do you find these products? So we've got this list and I'm just going to start to touch on it a little bit. Big tease, um, because, big tease. There's a list. Quick, ah, I took it away. Yeah. <laughs> quick little tease because I, yeah. I obviously I want uh, you guys to interact with us in order to get this. But, you know, one of the niches that I, I see a lot of this in, and I'm just going to chat on one of these ones on this list is the pet product niche, for example. Um, you know, pet products are, are awesome, but this niche is, is really, really easy to explain to people because this is really relatable to a lot of you guys. So, um, you know, there's obviously the needs within the pet product industry, you know, food, they need food, they need, you know, certain care products, things like that. It's already a huge niche. You know, there's huge companies like PetSmart. This niche is very, very large. Um, it's already saturated, right? From that perspective, from an outsider's perspective, we all go, well, if I need something for my dog, I go to PetSmart. But what about the products that you don't think about with your dog that or cat or whichever animal, sorry, um, that you don't know that you need or that you don't know that you want, right? And I know as Halloween comes up, there's a lot of big fads, you know, like Halloween costumes for your dog and stuff like that. Now, 
you don't go to PetSmart to go buy a Halloween costume for your dog. It's not a need that you have. But when you're on social media, if I saw a video of a dog in a costume, I'd go, that's hilarious. I want that. And now I'll purchase that. So yes, that niche is really, really saturated when we look at from the outside, you know, and there's a lot of competition within that niche. But if you take an angle where you can simply supply a product from a different perspective that they didn't know that they needed or that they didn't know that they wanted, that's how you can corner that market and segment that market to achieve those sales in an already booming and saturated market, right? You only need that one corner. And then, you know, as Maria talked about product niche development, yeah. once you've got that corner, then you can sell, you know, dog foods. You can sell a lot of care products. You can branch yeah. out into that right? It's just how you enter that, right, Maria? Right, yeah. And and then it goes into what we love best is uh, a brand. And, and, and a shout out to Kalish. Uh, Kalish is asking, uh, what other topics will you guys be discussing today? This is why we do Facebook Lives. Ask away. If you've got something that's on your mind that you need an answer to and need help with, just put it in here. Because again, from the beginning, you know, we've done over $10 million sales online. You know, I think we have the capability to definitely help you. So definitely, um, you know, let's make this uh, kind of fun and, and, and try to stump us. How, how about that? But yeah, to what you said, Jared, you know, if you can kind of go deep into the niche and then develop a brand by having these unique little things. And you could go to Etsy, like you may or may not know about Etsy, uh, but E-T-S-Y, Etsy.com. And there's often cool things there. And believe it or not, you could contact that vendor and actually have them be your wholesaler, right? And then you're getting into more unique stuff. And then what I love doing, Jared, is I love asking, you know, your customers, what do you like? Like, you know, I, I think a lot of you know that I'm also in the yoga niche. And, you know, when I, your first 100 customers is critical, your first 100 customers. And I vividly remember my second month into the business, I was phoning the customers not to sell them something else because you know that's you know that's the, you don't want to do that when you're building you know your, your your first you know physical product store it was just to ask them what do they think of the product and what other ideas or things do you think i should sell and i explain hey i'm a small family run business i don't say I'm, or act like i'm some big conglomerate you know that's what we do um and uh so so I got so many good ideas, Jarrett, from the, the customers that I talked to that I then had all these cross-selling items available, right? Uh, Shirley's asking a question, uh, uh, Jared, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, yep. pet, pet niche is a passion for me. Can you give an example of how to get in other than Halloween? So floor's all yours, Jarrett. So this is, this is an excellent question, Shirley, um, but there's a million answers to this. And this is what I love about e-commerce is there's a million different ways, right? Trying to take a unique position to enter the market is essential to get, you know, your first following like Maria's chatting about. So in the pet niche example, yes, Halloween was an easy example because it was costumes. But what would you do outside of this? Well, there's a lot of needs within the pet niche that people just don't think about that they have, right? Um, depending on geographic locations, for example, this can be things from like ticks or bugs and certain insects like that, that could really hurt your, your dog. I'm just taking one approach to this, right? Choosing a right. geographic. There's, there's many mm -hmm. different approaches. I'm just going to chat about a geographic one or temperature. Temperature is a really big geographical hurdle that a lot of animals have, you know, keeping your animal cool in the, in the hot months. Now that's a product niche that you can corner and you can go, well, in, you know, the Southern States, let's say when it hits 105 degrees, you got to keep your animal cool. And how can you do that? And there's products out there for that. that I'm sure a lot of people watching this are going to go, wow, there is. Um, there's lots <laughs> of products out there for that. Yeah. But people just simply don't have the need put in front of them. So if you get together this product, you get the ad content saying, hey, look, at it hits 105 degrees. Have you ever thought about your animal's paws on the concrete? Right? Because yeah. that's obviously a really big concern. My, my family has ties into a couple dog care businesses. And I know that that's a really big concern. Dogs can actually burn the bottom of their paws this is a really bad industry or a really bad, yep. sorry, um, yep. injury. So finding that corner and now you can enter the niche for that market. And once you're in, you're in. That's the, yep. the hardest part is getting the foundation, um, getting into that niche and actually being able to compete. Once you're into the dog niche and people know your name or you have a clientele basis, that is easy to sell mm -hmm. anything, right? And, but yeah, go ahead, Maria. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, the beautiful thing about that is then you know who to target, right? Like in that case, the temperatures, you can target individuals that live in all the hot states, right? Las Nevada, you know, California, Florida, uh, Alabama, Alabama, <laughs> Charlotte, or North Carolina, all that. Because I have 
uh, when I had Black Lab, when I lived in Vegas, I couldn't walk her on a lot of days. I had to walk her, get up at 5 a.m. in the morning to walk her, and then not until the evening because it's, it's too dangerous, you know, to have the dog's pads on, on the floor. Um, and the other thing, surely for ideas for you, because Jarrett, let's just, you know, give away some nice ideas and help you all out with brainstorming. That's your advantage to coming on these Facebook Lives and participating and asking questions is um, aromatherapy for animals. Like I remember um, for my dog buying this thunder jacket, who would have thought of that? But it's to co cozy wrap them, Jarrett, and it helps them um, with anxiety about storms. Uh, there's actually little, little uh, uh, crystals, charms that you can put on your dog or cat's collar that's supposed to have you know the crystal benefits. So think how we're going totally off of just neon glow in the dark at night dog collars that everyone teaches <laughs> online. Yeah. Nothing against that that's a great way to build your list to do a free plus shipping off or something dirt cheap. But yeah, so you got to think outside of the box. Maybe even go, Jared, um, in that niche that you want to be in, start buying the magazines for that niche. Go to Google Trends. Go to Google Trends. That's how I got into the yoga and aromatherapy niche two and a half years ago. That was trending like this, okay, that people are more and more people are interested in essential oils, aromatherapy, all that kind of stuff. So um yeah, there's some other great questions. Like uh, Carol, Carol has a great question. Uh, I've had a Shopify store for a few months. And by the way, I'll, we'll try to get to all your questions. I see them coming in. Um, selling European design menswear. Nice. Concerning on dress shirts. I've learned that's a difficult niche to be in. Ah, Jared, I'll let you handle that because that's more something you would know about, right? <laughs> yeah, so this is what I deal with on a, on a daily basis there. Um, with these kind of clientele, things like that. Um, so this niche is incredibly difficult. I'm not going to lie to you, Carol. Uh, it, it's not an easy niche to compete in, so that's why it's even more important to take a unique stance. Now, clothing is an excellent example because there's a couple reasons here. Um, first reason is you can differentiate based off you know your product selection, offering a unique style of product, and we've all seen that. That's the easy answer. You know, if you offer a unique new style of clothing, you'll absolutely be able to compete, right? Because people hasn't seen it, but that's not easy to do. Uh, especially from a drop shipping perspective, as I can't contact my manufacturers, you know, in China and get them to make me very nice clothes uh, to spec and sizing. That's a huge, huge logistical issue, maybe way down the line, but ignore that. So the other way is not just in the product variant or, you know, the need is offering them a, a, a basically an insight into the inside of the business. This is something that people don't do. And I'm talking about your social profile. Okay. So what do I mean by this? When's the last time you saw a fashion company, you know, show real raw content behind the scenes of, you know, the photography, the things like that? When do you ever know the faces behind the brand names? A lot of the times you don't. So this is another way that we can differentiate how we enter the market and take a completely different stance to the traditional corporate route. Admit that you're not a big player online. Like, you know, don't don't openly say your sales, but, you know, don't be like the, the signs and things like that. Show your face. Show what's what's the logic behind the brand. Um, I've got a couple clients in this space right now who I get them to sit in front of a screen with the outfit in the background and they say what inspired them to introduce this outfit into the market. And that's really relatable, really raw, and it's a unique way of entering the market. So I, I want that. you guys to know, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and they're doing really wow. well. You yeah. tell me about that. That's really cool. <laughs> we'll have to chat about that after. I learned something new on this. This is cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you guys can enter these new niches by offering different selection or acquire or showing them, you know, solutions to different needs. That's absolutely one way. But the other way is to show them a different way that your, your social profile is different and how you enter the market is essential, right? So yeah. I hope that that kind of helps. And now I just wanted to briefly mention foundation's the toughest part to these companies, right, guys? We're going to get to all these questions, but getting introduced into the online world is the toughest part. Once you have it all set up, it becomes easy. Once you have your clientele, it's so easy to develop product niches, right? Does that make sense, Maria? It, it, it is. It's um, like any entrepreneur starting a new business, that momentum to get started is the hardest part. Because Some people get all ticked off about the technology hurdles they have to go through, um, the branding, the logos, everything. But once you get past that kind of hard work, um, and, you know, just a, a passively uh, saying to everyone that that's why I hope you continue to, to stick with us because we're certainly help you with that because there's no reason to, to you know, uh, not move forward if you have a couple hurdles and we can help you with. But one of the things that, Jared, like, like your first three months is going to be the hardest of any story. And you and I talk about this, that we get ticked off at, at short-term thinking because 
And unfortunately, a lot of people pitch you that you're going to make all this bajillion of dollars in your first three months of your e-commerce store. And the truth is, you may spend your first, I mean, I'm just being honest. And don't get mad at me, Jerry, if I say this, or if you're watching this right now and you have bought any of our courses or whatever, I've been with us. I hope you know that we're real and transparent. But you know, you may have to spend your first $500 and that's, or even $1,000, and that's your Facebook learning university of data, which is gold. So you've actually invested in data. It's like investing in the stocks or uh, something. You're investing in your business, and the data that comes back about that niche you're in, um, you know, is is going to be gold and help you determine uh, how to better target your audience and sell more. So please don't walk away after making no money after five hundred dollars, because the truth is, Jared, you might have been sitting on the ninetieth yard line. You only had ten more yards to go to get to that winning product or winning audience. And I know you have a lot to think about talk about that but i don't want to go that's for another topic all right but um i don't want to go too off topic of hot product niche selection but i had to say that because there's a lot of people that get frustrated after uh investing their first little bit in facebook ads and then walk away and they might have been just on that that tip of the iceberg yeah and, that, and that's an excellent point and i, I yeah. completely agree i'm not going to stress it too much that's a whole nother yeah. uh live <laughs> conversation here let's stick to the to the niche yeah. i saw a couple of the questions rolling in there yeah. as well um, and we'll, we'll get to those now, you know, so, Hey guys, I'm a beginner with Shopify. Do you think selling iPhone cases can succeed now? Um, Aviv, I'm, I'm guessing I might be saying that wrong. I'm horrible with name pronunciation. First of all, <laughs> um, that that's an excellent question. And this is the, the industry that every single person decides to go into for some reason, uh, which makes it incredibly difficult, right? The more saturated the niche, the harder it is to compete and enter, right? This is obviously a very successful niche, but there's so many people competing in it. How can you differentiate? Now, this is one that I always tell people, you know, you totally can, but let's make it a little bit easier on yourself and I stray away from it. But let's say you're dead set. I want to sell iPhone cases. This is my passion in life. That's what I want to do. You can differentiate. And that's that again, just how I was talking about that clothing company, you know, maybe showing them behind the scenes and saying, this is what inspired me to do this design, right? Or taking a unique stance. A lot of companies take stances to do with charities, right? And they say they're selling panda cases and this portion of, of these proceeds can go to a panda. They're just simply differentiating their social profile. That's all that they're doing, right? Um, charity aside, all those things aside, it doesn't matter. All those different tactics that we see, they're just presenting you with a different social profile. Uh, and how you prevent your so or how you sorry present your social profile is essential to differentiating within the market because people think that you know you have to differentiate with product selection you don't you can differentiate with your your social profile and if you have a unique social profile people will come to you to buy the exact same thing that they can go and buy in the kiosk right I yeah. hope that kind of makes sense there um, we've got another one here yeah. I see popping up uh, Orlando. <laughs> Regarding generating sales faster and also testing products, do you recommend one product funnel process with upsells or a general niche Shopify store with multiple products? Orlando, this depends on how good, for lack of a better term, you are at e-commerce. Um, you know, so if I go and start up stores now, this is a lot easier for me because you know I've done this. I've spent over a million dollars of my own money in Facebook ads. I have an, an incredible vision at analyzing data, so it's different. But if you're just beginning, I know Maria agrees with me on this. Focus is everything. You know, choose one thing and master it. If you choose this general store and you focus on, you know, 30 products, that's never going to succeed. You know, the general stores that I do see succeed, it's always funny. You know, maybe they offer 30 products. They only advertise two or three of those products. They're even only yeah. focused on two or three, right? It's very difficult to master a niche with 20 products. Right, right. Or, or one store that I know actually has a lot of products they're showing here. But two or three is making the, the money. I'm getting a bit of an echo, so I'll be quiet. I'll put up the next nope. question for you, okay? From Kalish. Uh, Kalish, what other effective marketing ways are out there for any e-commerce marketing? Getting your name out there, creating potential customers, besides what they recommend of creating a blog, engaging in social media, email marketing. This is a great question, right? So this is basically just talking about the avenues that we can get our message out there. Now, um, you did leave out a big one. You know, it depends on the niche, obviously. But, you know, YouTube's a big one if you're doing services, things like that. I think it's always important to, to include in that general collection of data. But this is kind of an interesting question. I'm actually going to answer it probably the way you don't want me to, Kalish. Um, these are the best ways to get your information out there. And, and I know we want to differentiate besides social media, besides email marketing, stuff like that. But take a unique stance within these. I think you're asking this question probably because, you know, everyone does this. How can you be different? Or, you know, this isn't an avenue that, you know, you just want to be like everyone else. 
But these are the best platforms to get out there, right? Facebook and Google and YouTube are like the biggest search engines. Uh, I can't remember the statistic, but it's something like 80% of users that have access to internet use one of these three. Um, that's where everyone is. You need to take a unique approach to entering these avenues. I think that's kind of, if I'm guessing, Kalish, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but I think that that um, hopefully answers that question in a way that you probably didn't want it to, but I think that's the answer that you need to hear there. Oops, sorry, let me get me off so that okay. <laughs> So yeah, that was great. So listen, Garrett, we've got about four more questions and then I want we want to segue to a huge announcement. So what do you want to do from here? Because I usually like to make these calls about half an hour. Do we wanna uh, answer just one last question and then via comments we can answer the rest or do you yes. want to continue? Just answer but, so, yeah. so let's and we'll reach out to the rest. We'll reach yeah. out to the rest of you guys that okay. have questions that we couldn't okay. get to in the live. We'll message you guys. Okay. Well, I love this question because it kind of leads into our big announcements as well. So it's from Sam. Anything special you should be doing? Hey, Sam. Anything special you should be doing now to prep for Black Friday holiday season? So, oh, my God. I love this question because I rumored so badly so much when, Jared, you and Steve went for you, through your first Black Friday season and you took a little bit of a risk and you got to your first $10,000 in sales a day and we were, like, jumping up and down and all happy. So, um the floor is all yours. <laughs> yeah, Sam, there isn't enough that you could be doing for Black Friday prep uh, and Cyber Monday, especially. Don't leave out Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday is actually slightly bigger than Black Friday. So, um, By how much? Is, <laughs> for us, it was double, but that was because I, I gambled on some pretty big risks and uh, I'm, I'm not the risk adverse type. I'll say that. Uh, thank God that some of the people I'm involved with are. Otherwise, you know, I don't know where I'd be. Uh, it's good to keep grounded. But Sam, there's so much. The biggest thing is, is making sure you have the foundation set up. Um, the reason that me and Maria are going to be doing this announcement right away is because this is the perfect time to capitalize on Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales is getting involved now, um, starting something up now. That's why we're focusing on you know product niche development. This is the time to start getting your foundations and everything ready. Get that data about your customers, Sam. And then you'll be able to crush it in November with Black Friday, Cyber Monday. But more importantly, it's not just those, everyone thinks of that one, you know, that weekend that we have, but the biggest thing is going to be, if you can be successful in Cyber Monday, Black Friday, you've got all those Christmas sales as well. That, that two month span is just the biggest two months that you have in e-commerce. So that's why we're kind of focusing on this. I saw the gamble and the budget there uh, is what you're referring to. Um, so we were pretty new at the beginning. This was this was when I was just brand, brand new in e-commerce. We spent $1,000 in a day in ads. And then I convinced you know some people. I said, let's just do it. And we ended up spending about $6,000 in ads. And, and it, the return was incredible. Uh, I chat about it in some of my other videos you guys can check out. But that was our biggest gamble. But yeah. that brings us to you know what I was saying here, getting that foundation and getting involved now. Whether you're already involved or you're thinking about getting involved, this is the biggest time. And that's why we're coming out with this product niche selection. I want you guys to think about a niche um, because I want basically to start a store with you. Me and Maria would like to do this where we actually create stores with you guys and you guys see what it's like to actually create a store from zero, knowing nothing to getting to, and this is where we don't lie, to getting to you know, $100, $200, $300 a day in sales because that's the foundation. And as we were saying, once you get to that point, then it's so easy to expand and get into the market. You don't need necessarily that much one-on-one -on -one or that, that, sorry, that handhold guidance up to that point anymore because you just need to break into that niche. That's why we want to start it with you. So basically, um, and, and Maria, you can interject at any point, but we sure. have been working hard behind the scenes to get yeah. something for you guys. And I wanted to just make a program. I remember I said, that Maria, let's make like a program to teach them how to do this. And Maria was saying, no, 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 that's not the right way. We don't sell programs. That's not right. That's not what coaches do. And I said, absolutely. You know what? You're right. I was kind of stupid. And I apologize for that, guys, for taking that stance. John Maria said, what if there's a way? Yeah, I see that, John. And Maria said, what if there's a way that we could actually start it with them? And I went, yeah. this sounds brilliant. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I remember we had like a four-hour phone call. It was supposed to be 20 minutes about this. Uh, but it was I couldn't fun. sleep that night. It was actually pretty cool. Yeah, it was awesome. So basically, what we concluded is, why don't we do like a live session like okay. this for a 21 day period where you guys actually start a store with us and, and you guys yeah. can see everything that we do behind the scenes. I, I take the videos the day before and I publish them. So, you know, on September 4th, I'll take all of the videos that you guys will see on September 5th. So we'll be just one day ahead of you. So there's nothing fake about this. They can't, you know what? I could make a program off one of my stores that I've made millions of dollars, guys. Absolutely. <laughs> and you guys would probably buy it. You guys would say, wow, that's amazing. I can make $2 million my first 18 months in online sales. That's BS. 
other people yeah. do that. That's not right. Um, and that was kind of how I thought about this at the beginning, but Maria changed my thought process. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so from this, you guys we're, we're decided, you know what, let's do this. So we'll be one day ahead of you guys. You guys will see everything that we do yeah. and look at, we don't know how many sales this store is going to generate. You know, I'm fairly confident because I have over 20 startups now. Um, you know, and I wanted to make yeah. sure to have a good template that I'll chat about with you guys, but look at, there's no, there's no guarantee that you're going to get to, to $20,000 a day in sales. But I can give you yeah. one one guarantee, and I'm going to show you guys this number. I can't share my screen because B Live's a little yeah. funny today. But um, I started a store on August 1st, okay? Because I want, mm -hmm. I said to Maria, if we're doing this, I want to start one store and write down every single thing that I do, so that we have a template. And, and yesterday, and, and Jared, it's a totally different niche. It's something you've never played in before. So everyone, you, uh, that was the other challenge I said to Jared. It's got to be something that you know you don't have an unfair advantage about. So yeah. Go and I said, none of my clients have competed in this niche yeah. and I've never competed in this niche. So I wanted to make that very clear because I want to take this from a stance where, where you guys will be coming from. So I chose that niche and I did this. And we're, I mean, I'm going to share this story with you guys when we, when we go through this. But basically yesterday I did $450 in sales in a day. And I know that doesn't seem like a huge number. You guys are used to hearing thousands. That's, that's massive. In 18 days I got a store from, from literally $0 to $450 off small budgets, working my my bag off for lack of a better term, but <laughs> I just wanted to figure out how can I get you guys to that point? And this isn't even a niche that I, I can relate to. I just needed to pick something that I've never done and something that, you know, you guys would be involved with, like from the perspective of you've never done this, you don't know much about the niche necessarily. So I was at a disadvantage and I'm at this point. Now, are you guys going to get those results? I don't know, right? It depends on right. how hard you guys work and we're not going to lie to you ever. So this is all going to be done through Shopify. Yeah, I saw that question pop up there. Um, and, and we're really, really excited. So we're yeah. starting this yeah. on September 5th. I'm going to give a little bit of a teaser here. September 5th. Yeah. Um, there's a huge team that we've got for this. Me and Maria yeah. are pretty much the faces because we're the best looking ones, I decided. Um, <laughs> no, no, we're just we're the public figures of this aspect. But yeah. um, we've got a, an incredible team behind the scenes as well that we'll introduce to you guys in a later date. Um, but they've all done millions in sales. Everyone yeah. that's involved in yeah. this has done millions in sales. We're all very qualified and we want to get you guys involved at a low price point because that's obviously the biggest thing. Now, that brings me to price point, obviously. That's everyone in this live is probably sitting, well, how much is this going to cost me? Blah, 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 blah. Is this going to be another $5,000 thing? I want to answer this immediately, okay? No, this is going to be a cheap program. I want you guys to know that. I have staff to pay. Maria has staff to pay. We all have these people. But the best part is, is it's gonna be 100% money back. If you guys don't make your money, if you do all the work and you don't make your money back you know, within three months, absolutely, I will send you your money right back 100%. I think that is BS how these coaches charge $5,000 for a program, they buy it from you, and then the next thing you know, you're not making any money, like shocker, and they won't give you money back, they won't message you back, nothing. That is so wrong, and, and, and it's, it's BS to be quite frank, right? Um, thank you, Barb, I appreciate that. So. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. So what we're doing today, guys, um, is basically we have staff. We have a lot of things that we have to pay for. And we have. A, and so I'm not going to lie. Obviously, it's not going to be free. Um, but we're going to be coming in. And I'm going to let Maria yeah. chat about this. But we're going to do an early yeah. bird special for you guys because you guys are our biggest fans. You guys yeah. are the ones that are attending our lives. You guys are the ones that have motivated me to continue coaching. A, you know, Barb. Yeah. Barb is awesome. I, I, I chat with Barb quite a bit. Um, you guys are the ones that have motivated us to do this. And that's why I only think it's fair to get you guys in. Uh, early from that perspective. So Maria, do you want to chat on that? Yeah, yeah, I do. And then if you could just address what platform, because some people invested in other software, so you, you can address that too. But the early bird, let's get down to the brass tacks, shall we? So I want you to be able to save money. And right now, what I want you to do, we don't even have a sales page up yet, because this is how fast and furious we're putting this together, because I said to Jared, no, no, we're not going to prepare some stuff that's already successful. We're going to start from scratch with you. And one of the things that's going to happen is that we're going to do a Facebook live with you almost every single day. Okay. No Sundays though. Right. And there's two days I'll be in Toronto at a traffic summit conference. So I won't be able to, but Jared will have, have that those days, but Jared and I together are going to motivate you because in the past, even back since 2009, Jared, when I you know, ran all these 25,000 people through all my challenges, the reason why they were so successful and there's so many testimonials is because we're all part of a team. We're a group, right? And so 
in order to get the early bird special, because when we do finally sell it to the public, it'll be a thousand dollars, right? So how do you save money for it? Well, basically, I, I, can you see that in the uh, text? Because my screen's acting a bit funny. How we want you to comment early bird below. All you need to do is comment early bird below in the comments. And between now and Monday, we're not gonna use a chat bot. We're gonna personally one-on-one -on -one with us and our team actually private message you with more details about the early bird program and how you could save money and get in on this, right? Because Jared, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be open to a huge, huge group because frankly I couldn't handle it. You know, if, if, like when I had challenges in the past and had thousands of people in it, I mean it, I, you know, just you know, I couldn't run any other businesses after that. So and everyone's typing in early bird already. Awesome. You see that is that showing up on the on the box, Jared? Um, that's not, no, but I think that they're getting the point here. Gosh, everyone's entering early bird. Yeah. So, so awesome. So look at all the interests that we have, Jared. This is great. And honestly, I hope you feel that this is for you. If for whatever reason, like Jared said, this, you know, isn't going to work out. We do have a fully, why don't you talk about the refund thing and, and maybe software yeah. platform for a sec. Yeah. Yeah. So the refund thing, I touched on that briefly, right guys, but yeah. we're just going to have a, a check-in system where at the end of each day, cause this is a daily thing, right? And if you guys fall behind, there's ways to catch up, right? And we're, we're taking it a little bit easier on a couple of days so we can have this. Cause I understand everyone's busy, right? Um, it's not easy to, to start and we're trying to make, eliminate every hurdle that you could possibly have to get involved online. That's why I want you to do this with me. If you do it and you don't make your money back in three months, I will, I will send you it personally from my bank account or, you know, however we have this set up, we're still setting everything up. You will get your money back 100%. I won't even ask questions. If you did all the work, you did it. I don't, I'm not here to, to, you know, I want to make sure that everyone gets the value out of it because, you know, I've spent $15,000 of my own money on coaching that didn't pay off. And there's nothing more frustrating than that. And I completely understand that. And that's why I'm, yeah. that's not fair. I was fortunate enough to be in the position where I could afford it because my company took off, but a lot of you guys are brand new. That's not fair. Right. So we're doing it like that. Now the platform that we're going to be using is Shopify. Um, and now that's for basically like the first, you know, five, six, seven days where we're setting up the store. That really is the most important thing. And Shopify is the easiest platform. We're doing this from a no tech skill at all. If you know nothing about technology, you can do this, right? I've got a client who's 72 years old that I was working with on this, uh, from Australia and she's absolutely amazing. Uh, and she can do this. So I, I want to make sure that you guys are aware, like, you know, she got her computer when she was 65 years old. And that's, you know, that obviously puts you young 65, I want to add before I, <laughs> people get mad at me here. But that, that puts you at a technological disadvantage, right? So if you guys use a different platform, that's totally fine. For the first five or six days, it might, you'll, you'll be a little bit, um, you know, having to find the, the transition where you guys can figure out how to do certain things to your site. But Shopify is the cheapest. It's the easiest. They have the best support. You don't need someone to do your HTML for you. You don't need a coder. You can do it all yourself very easily. You can make changes yourself. It's the best platform. It's most superior. Look at their market cap. It's like almost 10 billion now. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so that's, that's why we're choosing that. We're making this as simple for you guys as we can. Um, we've already negotiated deals with some of the apps that we're going to be using to make sure that the referrals, you guys are getting money for all of that. And we've already worked it set. We can keep the cost even lower for you guys by using the referral links, things like that. We're trying to make this as easy and low cost for you guys as we can. So I'm really excited. Yeah, Maria, go ahead. Yeah, no. So you know what? I think everyone's excited. We see so many early birds. I think this is looking like everyone's going to have a rocket for September. It's going to get you ready for the Christmas sales because I vividly remember I started my first store in mid-October, kind of got the ads going in like last week of October, first week of November. And oh my God, you know, by end of November, I was at $1,000 a day in my first store and I'm so happy. Um, Actually, I wanted to take more time off at Christmas and I was almost too busy with sales. <laughs> what a problem to have. Uh, and I want that for you, right? And, you know, as far as any other questions, you know, I'd love for you to answer or sorry, ask them after we follow up with you with more details on the early bird program, because that way, hopefully that answers all of your questions. And you could also private message us back because this is a little unique. We're not just sending a blanket email out and say, you know, get in on this. this we we want to know and we care more about you personally one to one. And you're going to see that even just how we get you into this program. So uh, having said that, Jared, I think this is basically close to the end of a wonderful new beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I really look forward to it, guys. This is going to be awesome. Um, again, this is going to eliminate pretty much every hurdle that I've ever had anyone reach out to me and say that they have 
uh, you know, from yeah. cost, from not knowing what to do, from not having the support group. And I can tell you when me and Maria and my other partner were all starting stores together, gosh, is it motivating to be a part of a group where they're all doing the same thing that you can bounce ideas off of each other. And everyone in this is going to be in a private group where we're all colluding or we're all collaborating, sorry, um, and working together to a common goal. And there's nothing more motivating than that. Cause you know, the biggest thing with having your own online company is, Hey, I work from home alone, right? Um, bouncing ideas off Maria and stuff like that is so useful and so motivating to see her yeah. success, to see my success, stuff mm -hmm. like that is going to be amazing. So I really, really look forward to this. Uh, I, that's all that I have guys. I, we're going to message you guys all personally. I don't have a chat bot. I never will. So if I'm a little slow to reply, I'm sorry. Um, uh, but I want you guys to know that for my coaching, I want you guys to know it's all personal from me. Um, and I'll be reaching out to you guys ASAP. All right. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Well, you guys have a good one. See you later guys. Bye.